Um, but the transition to CEO is a, is a big one. And you know, the statistics are most people don't make it successfully. Um, I, don't, I don't want to jinx it, so knock on wood, but you've, you really, in a way that I haven't seen in my venture career, taken to the role. Could you tell us about how it's different? And you know, a little bit about where, you, where did you want the role? Um, and now that you're in it, you know, how does it change your world? Mm. Well, so one of my co-founders and I, Pasha, like we have always done a lot of like done a lot of the leadership together. Like, and we sort of found our natural niches for what we were good at. Like, Peter gives me too much credit. Like, I think I am one of the users of the site. Like, I like you know I like to shop. I like fashion. So I think about the product that way. But what Pasha is brilliant at is designing, architecting systems and thinking about like the feedback loops and just sort of the way the product works from a systems design perspective. So I think the combination of those two things is really the soul of, of what made Polyvore's product take off. Um, in terms of the, the transition, the way we'd always split responsibilities was, um, you know, he was responsible for engineering. I was our product manager, but he's also a brilliant product guy. Um, but we, as we started to add more people to the team, um, like we added a sales team, we added, you know, finance and people operations, recruiting. It just naturally fell to me that those people just ended up reporting into me and engineering was reporting into him. And so as we grew and the other parts of the company grew, it just became more of a natural transition. And it's exactly what um, Peter was referring to. It's about the, the company becomes the product, not just the product, you know, the website or the app. Um, and I, I real, we realized, both of us, Pasha and I, that the role of the CEO was shifting from being less about just building the product, but building the team that builds the product. And so that naturally became more my purview. I was always the one of, always recruiting for us. So it felt like a pretty natural transition. And we, we discussed it, and we decided, all right, let's do it. But I never went into poly were ever expecting this to happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's an interesting thing, which just makes the comment. She's like, well, I wasn't looking for this. And I, there, if I could be simple about it, there are kind of two types of people that come to this, the role of CEO, those that want to be CEO and those that uh, if you will, earn the title. Uh, and I think founders inherently, when they're founder CEOs, earn the title because they, they took the initiative. But uh, it's a red flag for us as venture capitalists when someone shows up at our office and says, I'm really ready to be a CEO, so I'm looking for CEO opportunities. I'm like, well, that's great, because you're going to adverse select into the broken companies that are looking for a CEO. Mm -hmm. And there was something very natural about Jess's evolution to the role because it sort of was happening as a course of how she was scaling inside of the company. Um, and I, the, the ambition to be a CEO is a, is, it can be a dangerous thing, but i actually curious as you think about now that you're in the role, mm -hmm. how's it different than maybe you, where, you, where your role was before and what's, un, what's been unexpected yeah. about it? <laughs> well, you know, I think the role of the CEO definitely changes as the company gets yeah. larger, right? And I went into this assuming like, okay, there's a set of things we need to do in the next, I don't know, at least a year, maybe two years, three years, that I think I can do. I think I know how to do these things, or I can learn some of them. But I also went into it thinking, like, there may be a point at which I might not be the right CEO anymore. Like, maybe taking the company public requires a different sort of person. So I definitely went in with it that way. So I, I agree, like, you don't want to just be like, I don't have to be the CEO. It, it's yeah. about what does the company need and what are you actually good at? Yeah. And this was sort of the right period for me. Um, things that have been unexpected, uh, I thought I would be able to spend a lot more time working on the product mm -hmm. uh, in addition to doing a lot of the other duties. That's turned out to be not the case. I spend so much of my time recruiting and meeting and thinking about architecting the right team to get what we done we need yeah. done. Yeah. Uh, so that's been a little bit surprising. As a control freak, <laughs> it's been difficult sometimes to let go of some of the product responsibilities. I was the VP of product before that, mm -hmm. but we have an awesome PM, Rachel, who... Like it took me, it took us a while to figure out how to, you know, delegate, how to let things go. Um, but I think we've 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 gotten that down. So that's been that's been surprising. Um, oh, the amount of external stuff that that I have to do has also been a little surprising. I'm more of an introvert by nature, so having to do that is not the most natural thing. But it comes up a lot, so it's something you just sort of have to push and do.